Hello and welcome to another demo, this time on Ansible ad hoc commands. Now before I jump in, I just want to draw your attention to a lot of the stuff that I've got on YouTube. There's a whole load of videos here on Jenkins, OpenSCAP, uh, AWS operator for Kubernetes, um, all sorts, how to use GitHub, how to commit to, uh, how to use Elkstack. There's a whole load of stuff on there, so just subscribe, like the videos. If you want to see another video, just comment in one of them, I'll pick it up and then I can make a video on that for you. So today we're going to be looking at ad hoc commands. Now there's there's a few bits to this. So the ability to use ad hoc commands in Ansible without the need for playbooks is actually quite a powerful tool. And in sort of the good old days of Linux admin, where I grew up, we'd have a golden host or a um, like a jump server with SSH keys, and we can literally SSH across the estate into different environments, pull out information and run commands, and then pull that back and actually kind of use that information. But Ansible ad hoc commands gives us the same ability, but it's a lot more powerful. There's a lot more add-ons, obviously, because you can make use of all the different modules that come with Ansible. So today, we're going to be looking at running some basic commands just on local hosts, and then we're going to take that and run it on remote servers. We're going to do things like ping, shell commands, copy, maybe file, yum, the setup module, and also just reboot the server. Um, we're going to have to manage that information using the inventory. That's quite important. So we're going to go through how to set that up to make sure that you're using using it in the right way. So you can connect to different servers or different OSs, potentially using different um, SSH keys, that sort of thing. And then we're just going to run a whole load of different multiple, we're going to run a whole load of different ad hoc commands on multiple servers, and then we're going to see the response. So that's what we're going to do. And, and my setup today, I've got a local PEM key. You might have an SSH key, but ideally, um, some sort of key would be ideal for this demo. And as always, the first thing is the docs. So Ansible do a pretty good guide on introduction to ad hoc documentation. So just go and have a look at this. You know, some of the examples and stuff I'm gonna do is gonna be covered in here. But obviously you can follow along with me as I do it. So let's just pop this out of the way. And the first thing is I've just got a clean directory and the first thing I'm going to do is just run Ansible. So I've got Ansible installed, obviously. Um, you can check out my other videos if you haven't got Ansible installed. There's there's videos in my um, in my YouTube channel that tell you how to do that and how to set it up. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just a ping command. Now I've got a lot of stuff just cut and pasted, and there it is. So just going to do a local host ping, and that just proves I can ping my local host using Ansible. And um, we can also run little remote commands. So local commands. Uh, so this one's using um, the shell module to run uptime. So nice and simple. And then that comes back. And obviously we're not saying that there's an inventory. We're just telling it to use local hosts, which is why we get this little warning message. But it can be ignored. It's not a problem. And then next we can run like just another command example where we're going to run just a df command. Yeah. And then I'm going to create a file using the copy module. So this is all just local stuff. I'll put these all these commands in with my um, description. So here we're copying a local file. We're giving it the contents within these single quotes. So this is my new file. And then we're telling it to create that file in the log. So if we cap that file, temp new file. Hello, this is my new file. It's there. So some nice and easy stuff. Now if we try and do this on a remote server, and I've got a couple of remote servers. And if we try and follow the same process, it's not going to work in the way that we want it to. So, so I'm replacing localhost with an IP address. I'm going to run the ping command. It goes, I don't know what we talked about. I've not specified um, a host file. There's no Ansible CFG that tells it where it might find it. I've got nothing in ETC host that might tell it where this thing lives. So it's it doesn't know what to do. So I need to authenticate as well. So if we were to add in like a user. So this server is a Ubuntu server. So I could add in uh, Ubuntu. Actually, before we do that, there's a couple of other things you need to do. You have to sort of fool it into thinking you're using an inventory file. So if I do minus I and hit enter, I'm still gonna get a problem because it's told me I haven't done something correctly. So you have to put a comma here because it's like a list, like a comma delimited list and then all. So now instead of getting the error that we were getting before, here where it says, don't know what you're talking about. 
we're now getting, I'm attempting to connect, I can't, I've got permission denied, it's unreachable, all that stuff. So because we're trying to get to this server, we need to give it, so in this case, it, it can't connect as the EC2 user because it's a Ubuntu server, it's in the AWS, default user is Ubuntu. So if I do minus U, Ubuntu, I'm gonna get the same error, but this time you see the username has changed. Um, and if, what I need to do is tell it where my private key is, so if I pop up and I just literally add private key and tell it where my private key lives, it should connect and give me a ping and a pong. Right, so that works. And I've got another server on a different IP address. So I'll just pull that in. This one is totally different. But obviously I can't use Ubuntu, that will fail. I have to change it to the CentOS. And this is where the inventory file is gonna come in. In fact, it's a CentOS server, but it's using EC2 user. Okay, so that connects. Brilliant, so we can now connect to two remote servers, one Ubuntu, one CentOS, and that's great. Um, but if we wanna run Ansible on multiple servers with one command, I don't wanna keep running different commands, then we have to have we have to have an inventory and we have to tell that inventory certain bits of information that do this job for us. So let's create an inventory file, host.ini, and I'll put in it my two IP addresses. There they are. So if I now, yeah, so we've still got the same problem. So if they were both the same operating system, I could just use, um, I could just carry on using my private key. Um, give it a default user and it would work. So if I'm trying to ping all my servers in the host or any file now, it can connect to one but can't connect to the other. And this is, this is just another example. If we change it to EC2 user, again, we now, it flips, it can now get to one but not the other. So what we need to do is we need to update invent, our inventory and include something like host groups. So if we go into the host file, And I'm just gonna cut and paste this in. So the same servers and the same IP addresses, but this time they're gonna go into groups. Oh. Something's going on my cut and paste. Let me try that again. There we go. So we can we can see here that I've got a Ubuntu group and I've got a CentOS group, and then it, they've just got one IP address in each. And that's good. So this now splits it up. So instead of having to select a user here, Sorry, instead of having to select all, I can now just specify that I want this to run the CentOS group and it will then connect to the CentOS group. If I change it, so I still need to make some updates, but if I change it to be Ubuntu group, then Ubuntu group, but I also change this. Then again, it will connect but we're still stuck, we're still not really working. So what we need to do is add variables for each group. So if we go back into the host farm, this time what we're gonna add in is the usernames. So we can separate out. So we have Ubuntu colon vars and CentOS colon vars and their Ansible user. This should be Ansible user. So the two Ansible users are different. You know, so we can log into one group of services, this user and log into another group of services, another user. It's fairly straightforward. So now, if we take off Ubuntu and just make it all, we're gonna run it against every group and every listing, and we take the user off, so we don't need to specify that now because it's a variable in our host file. We should be able to ping both boxes, we do. But we're still left with this. What if, and in my case this isn't true, but what if you wanted to use different keys for different servers? So if we go into the host file again, and what we can do is inside here, in fact, if we do it in the, the groups, that's probably better. So what we're gonna add is we're gonna add the Ansible SSH private key option and then we're going to point to our key so we can do that for both 
So if you've got one group of servers that needs one key and another group of servers that needs another, you can do it this way. You can also individually, like if you've got a set of odd servers, you can individually add it here and it will be just the one setting. So let's take that one off, let's save this. And now when we rerun it, we can take off the private key so our command's getting a lot shorter. And then it works now on both servers because it's looking at the variables for each server for each group and then it's pulling that out and it's using that information in the Ansible run. So it takes our takes all of the work away from us. So you can do the same thing with the Ansible CFG file for the host file and then you'll just be left with running then you'll just be left with literally running Ansible minus MP. But we're not going to cover that today. So the variables work in order. And because we're using the same one, let's have um, another group. So let's just do all bars. Now, because we're using the same key for the same servers, we might as well just have it once. So take it out here. And if we run it again, we don't need this. It should work in the same way because it's picking up the variable for everything. So if you had one of these SSH keys per server and then you had the same key per group or a different key in it for, for the group, it picks it up in order of um, like the closest to the server itself. So if you've got one specified here, that will override anything you've got specified in the group. And if you've got one in the group, it will override anything you've got specified in VARs. It's just quite a little neat way of sort of put the precedence in order of how it accepts the, value of the variables. So it's just worth keeping that in mind. So now I think it is time for us to run a few commands. Now that we've set up our um, keys, our inventory file to, to say what we want it to say, and it works how we want it to work, we can just run some commands now. So. The first thing we're going to do is the Ansible file command that we ran earlier. Let's run it again. And so this time we're going to use the host.ini file. We're going to say we want to run against all servers. We're going to use the copy module. Inside the copy module, the contents of the file is going to be this, which this is my new file on server. And dollar hostname is a local variable on each server. So that will pick up the server name and put it into this file for us. And then we're going to tell it that the destination has to be slash temp slash new file. So let's kick that off. And what I'll be able to do is SSH onto one of the boxes, check that file. Yeah, so we said, so what existed on one, didn't exist on the other. So let's go onto this one and just cat that file. So I've already got keys in place. I can just SSH um, minus I, use my PEM key. And then I'm already a EC2 user, so I don't need to put the user in. And then I want to cat slash temp slash new file. And there it is. So this is my new file on server, and this is the environment variable. So we've picked up a remote environment variable and placed it in our file. In our file. So straight away you can see that's actually quite handy to have. Um, let's do another one. Let's install the Telnet package on each of our servers. So each module, you, there is a YUM module and an app module, but there's also a package module which, which works on both. So if, like mine, you have a shared operating system, so you can split, uh, you can install command, uh, packages by using the package module. So if you're only working on RHEL based, you can just change that to YUM. If you're working on Ubuntu based or Debian, you can, or an app based, you can specify apps here. So and also because we're doing an installation, we need to become, so hyphen hyphen become, um, because we need root privilege or at least a, a, a user that has root privilege, which I have. So if we press enter on that, that should connect to both servers and install Telnet. Okay, it's on one, and it's on the other. And you can see the differing styles of installation. So this is yum based, and then this is apt based, where you get a lot more information back. So we now have that, so if we run it again, it's still idempotent. We can see here, that it's green. And I don't really want to turn it on there, so I'm gonna take it off. So I'm just gonna run absent. So, and this will delete it and uninstall it from both servers. Okay, we can still run remote commands as well. So if we wanna run uptime, you know, we can just do this. It tells us the uptime. If we wanna run a different command, 
I'm going to run a DF. And that also works. So we can pull this information back. And let's now do a reboot. So if you need to reboot a particular server or just one server, you can change your host file or just list it like we did manually. And this will reboot the server. And I think we need to be root access. So I'm going to give it the become option as well. It's just a straight shell command. Okay, so that's connect. That's done it. So now if we do the ping command, actually we don't need. It's just ping. That will try and connect to the servers. And obviously I've just rebooted them, so they probably aren't going to be available straight away. Excuse me. Yep. So that's not connecting. Let's try again. And what you find is maybe one will come up before the other and it will go green. And when they're both green, we know that we're, we've done our reboot and we can carry on. Any second now. Right, one up, both up. Right, now they're both up. So now let's just run an uptime just to make sure we can still connect. We can. Right, so we've done our reboot. You can see that they've been up for zero minutes. Um, now there's another interesting one called setup. So again, this can just be run against any server. Um, it's really handy, this one, because it pulls back some interesting information about, about the servers. So if we do the setup module, we can see that this is the Ubuntu one. We get loads of information about private keys it has CPU information free memory mount points um, IP addresses you know there's a whole lot of sort of useful information in there you can see the domain it's in you can see SSH commands you can see environment variables um, so there's quite a lot of information and if we take one of them let's take the CentOS host we can then be quite specific so instead of getting that big output of all those all that information we can just use jQuery so just yum install uh, jq so it's jq not jquery um, so this you're running this command pulls out the different information for us in terms of the keys so if we now do ansible facts dot and any of these in this list let's do os family take that see what we get back from that so it's red hat and then let's do something else um Let's do all IPv4 IP addresses. And we get that back as well. So it actually goes off to the server and pulls this information back for us. So that's really quite powerful. So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna put all the commands that I've used um, as long as I can into the description for this video, um, along with a few links. You know, don't forget to subscribe. If you like these videos, I put them on quite regularly. Um, they're quite handy to know some of this stuff. And check out my other videos um, because you'll probably find something on there if you're watching this video that you'll like on those. So anyway, thanks for the time. Um, enjoy the videos, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye-bye.